good day everyone and thanks for joining us today for this call from the management side we are represented by mr shrivat ram managing director and mr r ragunathan chief financial officer now i would like to hand over the call to the management for their initial remarks over to you sir uh, good morning uh, investors uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you in these uh, difficult times uh, in the quarter end of 31st march uh, 2021 uh, the company is happy to uh, register a net profit of 25.5 crores which is an improvement on 4.6 crores in the same period of the previous year uh, in the fourth quarter the company also registered revenues of 853 crores for the fourth quarter compared to 544.7 crores of the corresponding quarter of the previous year a uh, further if you look at it in terms of uh, annual uh, sales and profit the annual sales last year was 2215 crores against 2438.7 crores of the previous year uh, the net profit was 6.7 crores we had actually a very heavy loss in the first quarter due to the lockdown but we were able to recover and uh, we had a net profit of 6.7 crores against 54.1 crores same time the company the board of the company has also recommended a final dividend of 1 rupee per share uh, notable points are in the last year we started our first shipment of cast aluminum wheels to the us from a newly commissioned plant near chennai uh, the plant uh, is ramping up to a capacity of 7.5 lakh wheels the company exports about 25% of its sales and we have a diversified long term customer base I also thought that as this is the first time that we are making a call to a larger investor base uh, we, I thought I would spend a little time to explain the different sub segments uh, of your company uh, as as many of you may know and what is uh, what is uh, available on our uh, uh, results is that the industrial sector is 18% formed 18% of our sales in the current year and the uh, 82% was automotive but i thought i will give you a break up of each of the sub segments within this uh, you need to understand that some of the segments are very cyclical so the percentages uh, literally can change on a quarter to quarter basis but that said uh, approximately 20% of the company sales is from commercial vehicles this includes uh, wheels which we supply to small medium and heavy commercial vehicles there is also approximately 20% of our sales which goes to the tractor segment uh other than that aluminum wheels uh of forged and cast is about 7% of our sales uh, steel uh, passenger car uh, type wheels are 8% of our sales uh, construction uh, related wheels and fabrications are about 20% of our sales air suspension is normally 8% of our sales but last year given the uh, lockdown and its impact on the bus segment it dropped to 4% of our sales and uh, the industrial segment as i said is 18% of our sales the majority of which comes from the wind sector where the company is a strong supplier so this gives you some kind of idea of the mix of the company uh in terms of in in terms of uh, the direction going forward no doubt the fourth quarter was definitely uh, very encouraging and we had uh, fairly high hopes but unfortunately the second wave has hit so we are slightly more circumspect in terms of the domestic market export market we still are quite uh, hopeful that uh, whatever we have been able to achieve over the last 3 years uh, if you go back to fy20 or uh, uh, fy19 i'm sorry our exports were uh, less than 20% of our sales and we've been in- able to increase it to over 25% and this trend we expect will continue going forward i think with this uh, sh- short brief uh, one more thing is that most of our sales are to oems so we supply to ori- original equipment manufacturers uh, be it uh, the on the automotive side or even if you look at uh, 
construction or also the uh, wind customers they are all uh, oems who then make their uh, equipment or vehicles based on the parts that we supply with that i will now uh, you know hand it over to any questions that you may have related to the company thank you very much ladies and gentlemen we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handset while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles First question is from the line of Imran Khan from Ratnataya Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sorry for this sound; it, it will go. Thank you, uh, sir. Can you please uh, tell us? You know, you said seven percent of the sales coming from aluminium wheels. So, what are these wheels? Are these into uh, passenger vehicle, or is there is there something else which is you know you are supplying to? Sure. So uh, we started our cast aluminium wheel plant only in the latter part of last year. So there is a small percent of this which comes from cast aluminium. Most of it comes from forged aluminium wheels, which the company has been selling for many years, mainly in the export markets. Uh, I would say that uh, the supplies are probably going equally to uh, you know passenger car type vehicles, which includes SUVs. and uh, also to uh, commercial vehicles so it goes on both vehicles on the export markets no and then this is completely for the export market yes currently our sales so far has been there's a small amount which is sold domestically but majority is export market and, and sir do you have any plans to you know increase supplies to the domestic oem especially the uh, you know aluminium wheels on the suv side yes yeah the cast aluminum wheels uh, there's a process so once you start a plant there is a whole uh, validation process so you need to start the plant and only after that there is a process where they will come and audit you and then you start supplying to the oem but yes we are we are open to supplying to the domestic oem as well all right thank you so much sir best of luck thank you thank you a reminder to the participants if you wish to ask a question please press star then one on your touchstone telephone i'd like to remind all participants if you have a question please press star then one at this time the next question is from the line of nishant vas from icc securities please go ahead Yeah, hi sir. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. First, I wanted to understand in terms of commercial vehicles. Obviously, uh, currently we are going through a very sharp cyclical downturn. But in terms of, uh, let's say, looking at the from an upcycle to upcycle basis, would you believe that the contribution of this business will be higher than what it is today over a three-year cycle uh, on a broader basis? Yeah, the Nishant. Uh, to answer your question the commercial vehicles industry has always been a cyclical industry of course uh, you know the uh, the disruptions due to covid are a bit unprecedented so we are not able to really say when it will it will recover but it has typically had cycles uh, varying from as short as 3 uh, years to 5 to 6 years where the from up, from peak to peak so i expect that this will continue but i think that you know once stability uh, comes back to the country definitely there's not a prospect for growth right and so my second question is more to uh, targeted towards exports obviously uh, that is that journey has has been witnessed over the last few last 4 uh, 5 years you've seen the contribution rise so could you lay down your strategy as to how you are thinking about exports as a contribution is is it largely going to be centered around the industrial and aluminum or you you are thinking of any other products or any other segment sure so let me uh, let me also say that export business is business that you know you work for for a long time before you actually scale up uh, we are fortunate that we've been able to scale up three different parts of our business towards export 
the first one is aluminium which as i said we have forged aluminium and our cast aluminium wheels and we have a very strong distribution network which is able to sell and push these products the second area is actually i would use a broad definition of off highway which would include you know tractor and construction equipment in both these segments in, in construction equipment we are one of the leading suppliers to the global industry and have been for a number of years on the tractor segment while we've been focused predominantly in the domestic segment we have been able to make inroads in terms of export uh, especially i would say after our joint venture partner has uh, we earlier had a joint venture partner titan europe and uh, they exited the company last year and post their exit we have been able to make penetrate and uh, enter some of the large uh, tractor oems so that and the construction industry segment is is the second part the third part is the wind industry where we are already a global supplier to a number of large uh, windmill manufacturers and we are part of uh, the strategic supplier category in for these uh, customers understood thank thank you sir i'll fall back in queue thank you the next question is from the line of nikhil rongta from nippon india mutual fund please go ahead uh, yeah hi sir uh, thanks for this opportunity uh, sir just a uh, uh, couple of questions from my side first is uh, the aluminum wheel plant which we started a quarter back what would be the ramp up uh, uh, how would be the ramp up and by when do we expect the optimum utilization of that capacity yeah so the uh, uh, i think just to give you an idea uh, we have initially set up while well, the plant is for 750000 the idea is to uh, ramp up to half that level or at least 350000 Uh, by the end of this year and we are also making further investment to take it to the full capacity uh, immediately after okay okay and uh, uh second was uh, i believe we have announced some additional capex as well uh, in wind energy so if you can highlight uh, uh, a bit on that sure i can uh, as a matter of fact i can i can uh, also elaborate a little bit more some of the capex that uh, we are making is uh, part of it is for the expansion of cast aluminum there's a small amount for uh, forged aluminum and of course as you say the wind segment is the other segment where uh, we have made an investment and we are putting up a new plant uh, this plant is really uh, towards uh, a different area from what the company has earlier been doing this is the uh, uh, machining of uh very large castings so uh, windmills have a fairly large part so some of the castings are in excess of 10 tons so we have set up a, uh, we are setting up a plant which will be next to a casting manufacturer who is a global supplier and we will be doing the machining of the castings which is made by the casting manufacturer and supplying oems okay okay and sir in this cast aluminum facility uh, we were earlier expecting a break even in the month of april uh, so how uh, how is the progress on that part yeah the break uh, <laughs> unfortunately due to the covid second wave we are bit on the back foot we had actually planned to break even in the month of june uh, we are not very far away it really depends on how how the you know the covid rules in tamil nadu where the plant is based how those work out uh, we might still break even in the month of june on a monthly break even basis but worst case it will get pushed by a month okay and sir uh, last question on <clears throat> from my side on this uh, 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 price hike in the raw materials uh, uh, how do the domestic customer compensate and how is it on the export front and have we been able to pass on the i mean uh, last quarters uh, rise in raw material prices or it will happen in this quarter as well sure so i can i can take that question as far as the domestic manufacturers by and large uh, it is a, a fairly established process where uh, customers normally settle the price uh, 
uh, at best there is a lag of one month uh, but by and large there is no problem in in uh, getting the uh, settlement as far as export customers uh, it it varies from customer to customer but but some of them have uh, two windows in a year where they do price settlement so in that event for example just as a as a general example uh, if the settlement is, is in the month of uh, july and uh, december for example then any price increase that takes place will come into effect only from july but of course this would vary from customer to customer and the, and the dates and the timing of this settlement will also vary depending on the contracts uh, sure sir that's all from my side thank you so much and all the best for the future thank you thank you the next question is from the line of shreya lonkar from motilal oswal amc please go ahead yeah hi thank you sir um, am i audible yeah please please go ahead yeah um so uh, just wanted to understand the space a little better and our positioning within the sector uh, so uh, if you can uh, and and also if your thoughts on uh, given the covid has led to a lot of uh, changes in the right to wins of many companies uh, are you sensing some new opportunities coming up for us uh, led by this uh, global cyclicality and uh, if any uh, dislodgement of global supply chain where india's right to win has uh, you know kind of increased over the last 12 to 24 months uh, could you just give us some uh, high level uh, your sense on 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 the lay of the land please sure so uh, some of the business that we have one is also based on the fact that uh, you know people are trying to realign their uh, global supply chains but to give you to give you a sense i think broadly speaking if you look at the us us has import duties on chinese products coming in whereas in europe there is no such thing so in europe actually if you win business you are winning business pretty much on the same terms as what was there earlier whereas in us there is a there's a preference to look for a non chinese source but that said broadly speaking there is a level of de-risking which is which is taking place it is an opportunity it's definitely an opportunity and we have uh, been uh, as aggressive as we can be on a on a virtual mode uh, with customers over the last one year uh, this will uh, potentially continue to grow but i think that uh, you know we would also prob- probably have to hope for uh, the covid affecting our country to be short lived and hopefully you know continuation of covid does not dissuade customers but there is a there's definitely been a push not only with my company but has spoken to many others and uh, broadly there is a feeling that export inquiries and new export business is coming to via india so and so in that same light if you can also explain uh, although you did uh, talk about your export strategy but could you just give us some more idea as to say after 5 years how could your export business be very different from today uh, some long range uh, plan would be very helpful without maybe quoting numbers or you know you may just give us a qualitative sense that will also suffice yeah i think in in terms of in terms of strategy uh, while we do have a diversified customer base uh, we have identified some customers with whom we believe we can have a much deeper engagement and uh, with that deeper engagement will also come uh, growth as those companies grow and as their sourcing from us increases so based on our experience with some of these people uh we have started engaging with them on uh, for example they might have been in one product where we may have a number of products we can offer so we looked at expanding the portfolio of products that we offer to any single customer and we look at engaging with them in a uh, in a more fruitful manner i'll say to some extent in the pandemic you know virtual meetings where you can actually get more people to the table than you could physically Uh, have been beneficial and uh, i think that's the way forward in the pandemic i think what is what has worked is where you have existing customers to strengthen the relationship has been has been easy but the difficult part has also been that if you want to add new customers 
invariably in the automotive scene people want to do an audit want to uh, touch and feel the product visit the plant and that has been one thing which has been quite difficult so our strategy has also kind of aligned with the current difficulties and we are looking at how we can increase our business with existing customers on the export front so sure. and uh, so at this uh, at the end of q4 we would be at what about 50 55% capacity utilization uh it varies from segment to segment q4 was actually uh, <laughs> it, you know very much uh, very different from from the rest of the year uh, yeah. the yeah the capacity utilization varied i mean for example if you take the tractor industry the capacity utilization might have been in the in the 80s whereas if you go to passenger or commercial vehicle it would probably be as you say 60 to 70 type of level Uh, but that is only Q4. <laughs> it's not. It's not a sign of what is to come. Sure. Uh, so, sir, is it fair to believe that, given that uh, you know we are at a cyclical, cyclical uptrend globally, and your export tailwind as a result, and the domestic hopefully cyclical recovery will also follow in years to come, um, and utilization going up, is it fair to believe that the potential of wheels India? can be to generate 12% plus ebitda margin or that is still far fetched given that it's a b2b business no i think uh, again you know it, uh, obviously we would want to up it from the current level and uh, we have a target which is in between our current level and what you say and probably we first have to reach that and then probably look at the 12% level sure thank you sir Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chetan Ginodia from Alf Accurate Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, my question is uh, with respect to uh, the balance sheet. So, what would be our gross debt level as on March, and uh, 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 what is the capex guidance for FY twenty two twenty three in the next two years uh, since? Uh, last three years we have been in the capex uh, mode. So is the capex now over now with the uh, plant being operational? Yeah. So uh, I'll uh, Raghunathan, do you want to take the debt uh, part of it, the uh, gross debt question? Ah yes, sir. Uh, just to give you a sense of uh, the numbers, as at March 31, uh, we have. Uh, The total aggregate borrowings uh, that works out around 610 crores, as again the net worth that we carry at around 600 crores. That will be a perspective of the numbers as of 31st March. And uh, Raghu, probably you can also tell them how much is long term, how much is working capital. Uh, the backup of this uh, number between long and short is that uh, we have 300. Nine, three hundred ninety-five crores as a long-term debt, and the two hundred sixteen as a short-term debt towards working capital. Okay, yeah. Uh, just to add to that, you know, we uh, we obviously have been on a capex cycle, and uh, I don't believe that we are going to you know reach those high levels uh, anytime soon. That said, there is about uh, 100 crores of capex which was planned, uh, out of which the main items are were really related to the wind-related project, which I spoke about, cast aluminium, and uh, also for the forged aluminium investment. But there is also maintenance capex, which I think, depending on the business cycle, we can decide whether we go ahead with everything or hold something. I think uh, there will be some amount of flexibility on that. But yes, I agree with you that you know uh, we have digested a lot of capex, and so uh, we should really be looking at how we can control it going forward. Now that we have a lot of capacity that we have, uh, and this hundred crores of capex uh, for wind-related project and uh, aluminium forging and casting expansion is to be incurred in FY22 only. That will be incurred in uh, this year only. Yeah, it will be incurred in in this year. Uh, the in the sense that it it also depends on the timing. 
So we expected to the equipment and all that to come towards the end of this year. So it will be towards the coming year, if you understand what I'm saying. Okay, okay. Uh, sure, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Achila Kanitkar from Aditya Birla Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir. I just wanted to get a sense on uh, how the demand scenario looks over the next three to four months. And uh, you know, I give it um, a segment wise, because like you just said, the last year tractors are catering for the highest utilization levels, followed by passenger vehicles and then speed. I just wanted to know, you know, uh, what kind of guidance the OEs are giving you with respect to the next three to four months. Yeah, it's it's see, it's very difficult. Uh, so let me let me give you some kind of context. I think on the export side, uh, there is no let up in terms of demand. Uh, mm -hmm. There might have been some constraints that we had in terms of supply due to the lockdown, current lockdown. But other than that, demand side, there's really no let up uh, on the export front. On the domestic front, I think the the tractor industry, you know. Uh, it's too early to say. I'm sure there will be uh, some level of impact due to the fact that transmission has become rural as well. But mm -hmm. the basic fundamentals of, you know, they have good water level, good monsoons expected, financing available, MSP is decent. Uh, all these factors should still probably augur well for the tractor industry. I think... Mm -hmm. uh, of course, they're coming off a high base, so you can't expect, you know, uh, too much growth. But I don't think it'll, uh, it's not going to uh, fall in the coming year. At least that's not the expectation. It may remain uh, level, but we have to see. Customers are still, uh, you know, uh, far from comfortable from throwing numbers around. The commercial vehicle industry, again, depends on how we recover from COVID. But towards the end of last year actually there was a certain amount of momentum which is building up around you know construction and infrastructure related projects related to uh, tipper demand and even towards the end even the goods carriage vehicles seem to show some amount of uh, you know momentum uh, mm -hmm. we have to wait i think once once we recover from the second wave and if we get a period where there is stability in the country i'm, I'm sure that something similar could happen but uh, very difficult to hazard a number in terms of what is going to happen in the second. So, uh, is it the case that even OEs are being hesitant with respect to giving you a guidance with respect to you know, what kind of supplies they would need uh, let's say over a period of next two months, or, it, or does it keep changing? No, it keeps changing. For example, uh, I mean, even even for uh, for any given month, I mean, it's very difficult mm -hmm. to know till. Till the month is over, what what exactly is going to pan out? Because it depends on, you know, supplies of other parts. It's not always demand. It's also a question of supply. So there's a lockdown in one particular area, then uh, a customer's production gets hit. So there's those type of issues which are happening now due to the lockdown. But hopefully, if we are able to come out of the second wave, I, I think the situation will become more stable and becomes easier to talk about what can be done. So from a production angle, is it the case that compared to March in May, uh, the utilization levels have come down somewhat significantly? Yeah, that's, that's definitely the case. I think across the board, uh, utilization levels have dropped. Because they've been locked down. You also have to understand, they've been locked down due to the, the, the second wave. And uh, all the, especially the automotive industry, is very supply chain based. Mm. If, if one of the links on the chain has a bottleneck, then other people cannot manufacture because the vehicle, the vehicle will not go out if there's any uh, gap. Okay. Thank you. But this, is a, this, is, this is temporary. I think it will, uh, once Understood. lockdowns are removed, it will restore. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to get a sense as you know, if OEs are giving you an indication, maybe not, you know, uh, June, July, but from August onwards, they are expecting some improvement in production levels. But if, uh, basically, that is what I was trying to, you know, kind of yeah. get a I've, sense. I've not, uh, I, I've not heard anything uh, uh -huh. as yet, but uh, hopefully in time we'll, we will hear that. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to the participants. If you wish to ask a question, please press star then 1 on your touchstone telephone. The next question is from the line of Dinesh Toshi from Green Lantern Capital. Please go ahead. So thank you for taking my question. Uh, my question is more on the uh, windmill side of the business and the industrial component. Uh, uh, the first is when this machining capex is going to be uh, in place and uh, when it will be operational? Uh, between the fourth quarter of this year or the first quarter of next year. And this will be what? It will be pure uh, a service uh, job means you'll get a free supply free issue of the casting, you machine it and return it. Is that the way it will operate? Yeah, on the, probably on the current contract, that's kind of what we are looking at. And later on, what, you, you also wish to go backward to put up the casting or that's not No, the... no, we have, we have no plans to set up. I mean, we do uh, cast aluminum wheels, but this is a totally different ball game. Correct. So we have no plans to enter, ca enter casting for one minute. So this would be a very large CNC machine to do your machining part, right? Yeah, very large. Yes. So so the, the it will be pure service revenue uh, in the revenue side, correct? Yes, that's what we're envisaging. Okay. Second is, sir, on this windmill business globally, uh, how do you see this business panning out and the opportunity if you can help us understand, especially, uh, you know, the world is talking of green reset, decarbonization, etc. And there is a tremendous push uh, against fossil fuel based industry and more towards solar and wind and those kind of renewables. So if you can please help us that how do we see our company over the next four years in terms of opportunity and the revenue, uh, that is one. And second is uh, currently how does business operate? It's like fixed price. I mean, you get uh, time time orders at fixed price because that's why we are seeing some dip in the habit in the current quarter. No, no. So let me uh, uh, let, let me probably start with the current quarter and then then move up to the other question. So if you look at the current quarter, the current quarter is also affected by the fact that you know steel prices went up substantially in January. And uh, for us, the reference date for price correction is uh, was unfortunately not in the fourth quarter. It only come, uh, comes subsequently. So whenever there's a correction time that happens, that correction will be made, uh, at least partially. So that is uh, one reason. Of course, the other reason is we have another division under industrial, which is uh, heavy engineering, which uh, was set up to do fabrication for thermal plants. That... Uh, the performance of that division was uh, not very good compared to the previous uh, fourth quarter. That division, incidentally, we have also, the board has also uh, told us to look at disposal of that uh, business. So we are in the process of doing that and we'll inform you once that takes place. Mm -hmm. Now, coming to the global wind industry, what you say is right. I think Europe, definitely, there is traction that is already happening. Uh, fairly strong traction, as a matter of fact. And in the U.S., I think people are waiting to see uh, how much uh, Biden is, uh, the president is able to do in terms of implementing his plan. So it's still early days. We still don't know to what extent he will actually implement his vision. Uh, but definitely there's a trend both in, in uh, U.S. and in Europe to move more towards renewable and wind is very much part of that mix. Okay. So can we quantify like this industrial business for us? Can we what uh, double the size over the next three years? I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm, I don't have enough information to be able to quantify, but okay. it will depend on how things roll out. Okay. Yeah. Thank, thank you, sir. That's all. I'll come back to in the queue again. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, if you wish to ask a question, please press star then 1 on your touchstone telephone. The next question is from the line of Nishant Vas from ICCA Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity again. 
Sir, I just wanted to understand the aluminium wheels business. Obviously, this is a new facility, and uh, you would have uh, you have would have some learning experience about how the how the ramp up is, what is the quality levels, rejection rate. So, I just wanted to understand from a broader basis, are we are we seeing uh, manufacturing process improvement, uh, quality levels that you would have envisaged uh, at the start? And also on a on a much broader context, not necessarily numbers, but from a profitability standpoint, how does this uh, aluminium wheel export business potentially look like uh, vis a vis say um, domestic? Like, how do you see that in the structure of profitability different? Okay, so let me let me try to answer that. Our uh, our export business at the moment is uh, largely through uh, large uh, or very large distributors of. Uh, cast aluminum wheels based in uh, North America and to some extent in Europe. And uh, the challenge in this business uh, is not so much the ramp up of volume, but the fact that uh, in the aftermarket, the variety of products that you make is uh, significantly more than what you would have in OEM. So really, it's a question of developing new products. You develop new products. When you get the new products, then you start the business. So the the chain of ramp up is as much based on new product development as it is based on capacity. This is the first point. Uh, the second point, which is which is related to margins that you asked about, uh, I cannot really comment about margins because our company per se has not started uh, domestic supply. But uh, the margins are. Uh, you know, pretty much in line with the typical margins that we've had on other export business. Okay, okay, fair enough. So, but just to pick pick more from your response on the SKU side. So, is it fair to assume because uh, we've seen other companies in in export orientation from India where SKU complete SKU requirements are very high, but that creates a strong uh, niche and a customer relationship once you ramp up those SKUs. So, do you, so how do you how are you planning on that? So, you you plan to uh, work on the new product development to increase your total addressable market uh, over a three-year window to kind of cover the entire market, or how do you think about new product development? So, we have uh, so we have a fairly uh, strong long-term relationship with our customer. Uh, uh, he's also, he also buys other product other than cast aluminium wheels. And we've had a relationship over a number of years. So he's actually drawn out a roadmap of what he wants us to develop on a you know, practically on a monthly basis. There is a plan, and we are trying to adhere to the plan. Uh, I think we have now operated enough to understand the nuances and new product development and getting the clearances. These are also, you know, the products are also going to the aftermarket in US and Europe. So the aesthetic requirements are also. Uh, quite high, uh, especially given that there are different finishes, there are different uh, paint colors, uh, clear coats, uh, caps, all kinds of other aesthetic related issues which go into the product. We've learned how to do that and we are right now just following the NPD schedule that our customer has given us. Fair enough. Sir, I just had a small clarification on the commodity price throughs. Uh, I would is the export also happening on a quarterly basis, or I, I would presume that happens uh, twice a year on the with the export customer. Yeah, it it varies. It's uh, I would say it, it is normally twice a year, at least for the OEM customers, it's like that. Okay, okay, and um, and my my second question was on the export on the construction construction business. I presume that's also a strong share of export. Uh, how are your customers uh, giving you this? You obviously, you mentioned on a broader basis, exports have been strong, but just wanted you to understand your thoughts on the construction side because, as you mentioned about your in comments on Biden's uh, infra plan, uh, do you think there could be a surprise in terms of potential growth in, say, markets like US? See, hey, whatever, uh, yeah. if, you, if you leave aside the windmill segment, whatever we have gained in terms of, uh, you know, export of, let's say tractor wheels or construction wheels or even aluminum has pretty much been you know uh, on the same overall market size so we've actually been able to gain uh, new business from customers some of them have been new programs that we have entered with customers where we've been given the opportunity 
and some of it has also been the fact that uh, you know some in- individual products have gone up but if you look at construction and uh, to a lesser extent tractor it is a cyclical business in the sense it is it varies and the cycle i will say has still not yet kicked in it's off uh, there's a peak and a trough it's off a trough but it is uh, still not yet started moving towards a peak and uh, lot of the business that we've got that way is partly lifting off a trough but also partly new business that we have one okay so perfect that, that that gives us a sense about the potential opportunities thanks a lot i'll fall back thank you thank you the next question is from the line of amar khan gaur from philip tapki please go ahead yeah thanks for taking my question uh first but my question is on the aluminum uh, cast wheels business but we have seen uh, a lot of competition uh, i mean a lot of players setting up uh, capacities for aluminum wheels specifically in india so uh, what do you what do you see as the potential uh, size for us the opportunity for us and uh, what is the uh, i mean your view on the overall uh, industry for alloy wheels yeah there's been a uh, see if you look at passenger cars in india there's been a migration you know if i go back uh, maybe 7 years it was maybe around 15% and it has now uh, come up to the mid 30% uh, in terms of uh, the penetration of cast aluminum wheels uh, this is this is my uh, limited understanding at the moment so there's been definitely a growth in terms of the fitment of aluminum wheels with our wheel steel wheels uh that said as you say, as you said there's also been a lot of capacity addition and uh, while there is capacity addition with this expansion beyond the point i think it is the players that have the capability in terms of not only production but also design capability and ability to be able to differentiate with design and engineering that will make a difference in the market going forward uh Uh, i also need to highlight that you know while uh, aluminum penetration has grown the passenger car vehicle market has actually not grown in the last few years that's another point to note but from our perspective we feel that our, our strength in engineering which has been built over the last 50 odd years i think will hold us in good stead to compete in the domestic market going forward any target you would have for uh, market share in in this in this segment no we don't have a target and so a small clarification it, it you are only doing the passenger car uh, wheels right not not two wheelers no we are not doing two wheeler wheels okay Th- thanks thanks sir and sir uh, a small uh, data request uh, from my side if you could please uh, list down your uh, capacities in individual segments especially in the automotive and and your market share if that is possible Yeah, we've listed out. Uh, I think broadly speaking, we've we've listed out our different segments. Uh, in terms of in terms of market share, uh, I'll say on the on the tractor front, we supply more than half the uh, product which is uh, there in the market. Uh, and in the commercial commercial vehicle side we are close to uh, half the products which are distributed in the market and uh, on passenger car wheels again on steel wheels i would say the situation is the same but steel wheels is becoming a smaller part of the whole and the capacity if you can uh capacity is as uh, you know a previous colleague had asked it has the capacity utilization different industries that don't utilize the capacity yes yeah. oh, sorry it's the actual capacity is not the utilization sir total capacity uh the capacity varies from product to product uh, so i think uh, the capacity utilization is probably gives you a, a better sense of, of what we actually do okay okay thank you so much sir i'll call back thank you Thank you. The next question is from the line of Raja Kumar, individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon. So thank you for taking my question. So I have three okay. questions. So the first question is, uh, given the the export market is uh, you know uh, ramping up fast, 
I just want to know: Will you be able to ramp up your exports, uh, you know, given the paucity of orders on the domestic side, so that the mitigation and the PNL is kind of taken care of? Yeah, I think the uh, so so there's there are two parts of it. One is one is the the domestic market. The domestic market at the moment is still uh, uh, you know struggling with with COVID, and uh, to some extent, supply chain is also struggling to due to that. But uh, we have been able to, in the last year, we were able to do a fairly decent ramp up on exports, uh, especially in the fourth quarter. Uh, no doubt, in the current period with the lockdown will be slightly affected, but we believe that otherwise the trend will continue for the balance part of the year. We don't see any challenge in that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, so the second question is on the Titan Europe exit. I just want to know what we have gained and what we have lost uh, because of uh, Titan Europe exit in this area. Okay, I I can answer at least part of part of the question. So one is on the uh, one one is as far as the uh, uh, gain uh, we have been able to you know approach uh, agriculture tractor and construction equipment customers. Uh, who earlier we had not uh, approached because they were customers of the JV partner. So we've been able to increase our business in both these areas, primarily by uh, following up with them. And uh, hopefully this will hold us in good stead going forward. There's not been much that we have lost uh, because the company has also engineering capability. And uh, so far we've not seen any impediment or any uh, any uh, uh, anything that we have lost because of the uh, partner exit. Okay. So the last question is: uh, I uh, we we saw some uh, restructuring uh, or alignment of holdings within the previous family. Uh, just wanted to know: uh, would it impact the Wheels India in any way? No, that's unlikely to impact uh, Wheels India in any way. And just you know, referring to that the very same statement that was made, it's basically an alignment of ownership with management. So uh, the parts of the family that are managing the company will continue to manage. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So just one request: if go forward, if you could hold the quarterly uh, investor call, it would be helpful uh, for us to get an update of uh, the company's operations. Sure. I mean, we'll we'll at least have uh, at least twice a year. We'll, we'll see whether we can have a quarterly as well. But uh, thank you for that request. Yeah. Thank you, sir. All the very best. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to the participants: If you wish to ask a question, please press star then one at this time. The next question is from the line of Devang Patel from NAFA AMC. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. A few questions, uh, queries on margins. So, uh, how are U.S. margins have moved? Uh, uh, export margins have moved in the last few years uh, because of the duties that have been imposed on China. Yeah, there's more. Uh, uh, there's definitely more flexible on uh, flexibility on margins in the U.S. Uh, honestly. If I can say, um, probably more so in the aftermarket products as opposed to the uh, OE products because uh, OE products again depend on yeah. But OE products also, as you, as you say, probably the reference level has gone up, so that's definitely helped uh, where we are exporting to the US. And uh, for us, it is still the you know single largest region of export for the company. Okay. And within the six seven uh, segments uh, in, in our portfolio, uh, which are the relatively more profitable for us, and which are the drags? <laughs> so the uh, the segments that we are trying to grow are the ones that we believe are more profitable, which is the off highway segment, which is the construction and uh, and tractor uh, segments, the uh, the windmill segment, of course, the aluminium segment. These are the segments that we believe uh, have a opportunity to improve our profit margin. The uh, if you look at the the, the domestic uh, passenger car steel wheel segment, that is a diminishing segment and that is a bit of a drag. Uh, commercial vehicle, of course, is also depending on the cycle. So 
So in a, in a, on an upcycle, <laughs> you you would not call the commercial vehicle as a dog. But now that we are at the bottom of the cycle, yes, at the moment it's dragging a bit. Okay. Uh, sir, and can you talk about what your margin aspiration levels are in the next two, three years and what uh, will essentially help us improve margin? Yeah, I think uh, another colleague of yours has asked me this question and I think I've, I've answered him. So uh, I won't repeat myself on that. Fine, sir. All from my side. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Patel, does that answer your question? Yes, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, if you wish to ask a question, please press star then 1 on your touchstone telephone. The next question is from the line of Raja Kumar, individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, so thanks for the follow-up. Uh, just uh, wanted to know uh, any leverage on the interest side that you were able to take, uh, given that we have significant borrowing and given the interest rates are coming down. Just wanted to know what is the trajectory we can assume on the interest cost. Uh. Yeah, so the, the one thing that uh, we are doing on the working capital side, because of the fact that we are substantial export, is we are uh, taking advantage of uh, packing credit to the extent possible. So that's a one plus in terms of, uh, you know, interest rate, uh, which the export business also results in more of working capital leverage because of the uh, the transit times. But at the same time, we're also able to afford uh, lower interest rates on that. So that's one thing that we are doing specifically on, on interest and finance cost. Yeah. So any absolute numbers you can share to the coming year to uh, compare to the last financial year, uh, would you expect uh, uh, what numbers to come down or go up significant you know, share some ballpark uh, numbers? No, it's very difficult to to throw any numbers. I think on the uh, we've already we already have seen to some extent our trajectory on on exports. Uh, if you if you track our exports from the uh, from the beginning of the year or the last year to this year, we've seen the export grow. But the domestic market, I think it would be very very difficult for me to hazard any guess on what will happen because it really depends on uh, how the how the pandemic affects our country, uh, not only the second wave, but also whether anything further happens. So I would uh, probably not make any comment on the future projections on domestic. Okay. But is it fair to assume that the trajectory will be down compared to the, the financial year that we close to? Uh, yeah, we're hoping that this year will be definitely be be better than the previous year. Uh, that's also partly due to the fact that the previous year you had a, a complete lockdown uh, for a period, and uh, this time we are having more uh, regional related lockdowns. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Imran Khan from Ratnataya Tapki. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thanks for the opportunity again. Uh, so just one cl clarification. Uh, you know, you made two statements. In in one, you said you have about 8% of your sales coming from, you know, steel wheel passenger vehicles. Mm -hmm. And in the second statement, you said you have 50% market share in the steel wheels, right? And especially in the passenger vehicle category. If I do a rough math, it comes out to be around 200 to 300 crores for the year. Is it is it this market that small? The market has actually shrunk. Actually, uh, again, I, I need to highlight that you know I'm looking at really the four wheeler market, and I'm not including uh, two wheelers in this. We only we do we make uh, wheels largely for the four wheeler market at the mm -hmm. lowest. Uh, but yeah, the market has shrunk. It is a fact that the market is shrunk. Okay. okay. And also, also some of the some of the OEMs like uh, the uh, other multinationals, leaving leaving alone the market player, some of the other multinationals have a higher footprint of aluminium. Mm, right. Right. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. 
Reminder to the participants, if you wish to ask a question, please press star then 1 on your touchstone telephone. The next question is from the line of Samarth Singh from TPS Capital. Please go ahead. Um, uh, good morning. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just one question. Is, sure. uh, do do we have a, a sort of a, um, optimum uh, leverage level that we think about or about which we don't go? I'm not sure if you already answered that question. But. <laughs> no, I haven't. No, I haven't. But uh, it, uh, typically, you know, this is this is again what we've been trying to do as a company. Typically, as a company, we try to keep on the uh, uh, keep our uh, debt equity under one. Unfortunately, with with COVID and especially the impact of the pandemic on our first quarter, we have exceeded one. So, and I, I I'm not sure of how the current year will also pan out, but uh, yeah, broadly speaking, that is probably something that uh, is normally looked at uh, uh, quite seriously. Okay, and then that's including working ca working capital and term loans. Um, yes, 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 yes. Okay, very helpful. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference back to the management for closing comments. So once again, uh, thank you. I think uh, this is the first time that uh, that Wheels India has actually had uh, an all investor conference call. Uh, so I appreciate uh, the interest from investors. I hope the company has been able to answer your question satisfactorily, or at least to the best of our ability, we have definitely put in the effort. Uh, look forward to further interactions with you going forward. Thank you. Thank you.